Hey guys, this is Mrs. Hernandez. We're going to be talking about viruses today. Um, before I get into what you are going to be doing, we are going to see just how small viruses actually are. So this animation gives us an idea. Now first, you can see this person is just holding like a little tiny finishing nail, like what you would use to hang up pictures, or I don't know, maybe um, like the trim around your, if you look at the room that you're in, there's wood trim that connects the floor to the wall. Those are the nails that are inside there. So it's very, very small. So if we go up in magnification and try and zoom in, first major thing we can see is the human hair, two millimeters. So again, not very big. It's almost like, like an eyelash, like a fake eyelash. Yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And these are dust mites. <laughs> Aren't they cute? So again, we're on the head of a tiny pin nail. That is a dust mite. We go further, you can see, okay, what the heck is that dot there? This yellow green spiked structure, that's pollen. Next to that is a lymphocyte, which is a type of white blood cell. And then we have a red blood cell that's coursing through your veins right now. And we have this baker's yeast. They use this to make all types of breads. Um, I can't make bread right now because I don't have flour and it's all gone. So maybe everyone else is making bread. I'm not making bread. But this is what you would put into your recipe to make the bread rise is yeast. So if we go even closer, we've got E. coli, Staphylococcus, which is a type of bacteria. We've got the Ebola virus, and then we've got a rhinovirus, which is actually going to be closer to like what our coronavirus is, like that size. So Again, just imagine this rhinovirus in your body. We'll zoom out a little bit. Remember, red blood cell, white blood cell. Oh, can't go any further. Okay, so mind blown, right? That's crazy. So anyway, that gives you an idea of how small these little buggers are. And it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing that scientists are able to retrieve the DNA, or RNA rather, the genetic material out of this tiny little thing. Isn't that crazy? So anyway, hopefully that gives you somewhat of an idea. And also, too, just how it relates to... Um, some of these white blood cells, so small, and yet it can do so much damage. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty cool animation, so hopefully that gives you an idea of some sort of scale. So what you're going to be doing today, there is a reading, the virus reading. Um, it's not too bad of a read, and it's got some really good... Um, vocab words in there too. And then you're going to be watching this video talking about viruses and specifically COVID-19 or the coronavirus that um, we're dealing with now. After that, there are some questions. There's only five questions. These questions, you can answer them, hit submit, and then you can try again up to three times. So let's say the first time I did it, I'm like, okay, I don't really need to watch the video or the reading. I think I have a pretty good handle and I'm going about answering the questions and I'm not doing so hot. You can retake that two more times and then we'll take the highest score. So you can also use the reading, have the reading up um, while you're doing the questions and just another tab. Um, that should help you, especially with like, there's going to be a question about how viruses work 
and the different steps. So if you just have this part in a different screen, then you'll be able to answer those questions pretty easily. So that's all for today. Um, we don't have any school Friday or Monday, so you have a little bit of a break. Hopefully the weather doesn't look too great, but that could change. <laughs> Hopefully just make the best of it and uh, catch up with anything that you're missing and, and be safe. All right. Talk to you later.